Ten seconds. <coughs> like to call tonight's Homes of Planning Board meeting to order. Anna, please call the roll. Ken Vincent. Here. Jason Berry. Here. Jeremy Rhodes. Here. Doug Haberman. Here. Mark Richardson. Chris Horton. Here. Ron LaHoulier. Here. This time I'd like to appoint Mr. Haberman as a full voting member for the evening. First item is approval of the minutes of the April 17, 2024 workshop meeting. Does anybody have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Barry. Any discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Abstain? Next item is approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of April 17, 2024. Is there a motion? Mr. Richardson. Uh, moved to Seconded accept. by Mr. Haberman. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Abstain? Next item is committee reports. Uh, you have a summary of the land use board reports. Is there any comment by board members on that summary? Seeing none, we'll move to city council report. Mr. Vincent, do you have anything for us this evening? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the city council approved the 2004-2005 uh, uh, budget um, by actually a tax uh, cap override, which I didn't vote for. Uh, and I'm proud of that because I just think that it just was too much. Uh, myself and another counselor. Uh, so uh, that passed. And also the, um, the mayor has uh, put something forth uh, to uh, do a study on, um, on um, uh, parking meters. So we may see something uh, come about in the near future on that. And that's all my report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Vincent. Stratford Regional Planning Commission update, Mr. Richardson. Sure. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it to the last meeting, but the discussion primarily was around the, uh, the uh, Transportation Improvement Plan 23-26, and one of the projects, the uh, Coast Project, was <coughs> removed from the plan. Um, we'll be talking about the same thing this coming Friday, so, and I will be there. Uh, we had the land use uh, public meeting uh, last week here, which was kind of interesting, I thought. Um, people looking at the maps where where there's open space, uh, housing needs, where those things can be met, um, commercial development, all that kind of thing, and there was a lot of discussion around those those topics. So uh, I thought that was a well worthwhile meeting. Uh, something else I want to mention that I noticed uh, that was sent out by the SRPC, though, uh, is a land and water conservation um, uh, fund that is uh, administered by the National Park Service but comes through the state agency to the local cities and towns of New Hampshire and it's for recreational use it's for either acquiring property or renovating property or uh, using property that uh, is for public use for recreational purposes and uh, reading the, the, the grant was, I thought was pretty interesting because there's a lot of uses for it. It's a 50-50 match, federal dollars to local dollars, so that's not bad in this day and age. And uh, if, if we're talking about saving space or uh, you know, open space in, in, in Summersworth or anything like that, that might be something that the city would want to look at and consider. So. Thank you. Eyes on 30, 20, 30 committee, Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so we didn't have a formal meeting last month. Uh, there is communication going around to have a meeting as early as next week. So once we know, we will get that officially published, uh, get it uh, posted out to the public. Um, on other news, last month we did have our first Don't Trash Summersworth uh, session, which was it occurred on uh, off of Commercial Lane, just by the Home Depot. We had about 13 attendees. We picked up about 20 bags of trash, two needles, and ironically, a, a uh, trash collection sign, you know, collect your junk sort of deal. I find, I find the, uh, the humor in that rather ironic. Um, we do have our next one coming up this Saturday at 2 o'clock. We'll be cleaning up between uh, Milo Lane and Blackwater Road up to the flashing lights. So that starts at 2 o'clock. Um, vests, pickers, and bags will be provided. If you want to come, bring your own, your own PPE, gloves, and uh, steel-toed shoes. 
right, that's all I have to report. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Community Power Coalition, Mr. Horton. Committee has not met, no report. Housing Committee, Mr. Horton. Uh, again, uh, the committee attended the uh, planning board's last meeting last month. Uh, since then, we have not met, no report. Thank you very much. Next, we're getting to old business. Before I start, I'd just like to ask everybody to please uh, turn off or mute any cell phones or electronic devices. <coughs> this is being televised, so if you need to speak this evening, please come up to the microphone, state your name and address or your affiliation. And if you have to stray from the podium, we do have a portable mic you can use uh, to make your presentation. Uh, also, when you come up to speak, please address the board and not people in the audience. Thank you. Uh, first item is old business. Bill Doobie Kia LLC is seeking site plan approval for an automobile sales and services facility on a property located at 220 and 222 Route 108 in the Commercial Industrial CI District. Assesses map 61 lots 10 and 11, site number 02-2024. Director Mears. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the board continued uh, the site plan application at the 4-17-2024 meeting. The applicant attended uh, SRTC review on March 13th and uh, May 8th. The applicant has provided an updated landscaping plan uh, and third party review from Horsley Witten was completed last week. Uh, you should have received that in your packet. Uh, again, this is a site plan proposal to construct an automobile sales and service facility for a new dealership comprised of 22,000 square foot building with associated access ways and parking. The proposal includes demolition of the existing retail buildings, two driveways, one from Route 108 and one from Blackwater Road. And there are a number of waivers as have been discussed. Um, the property is located in the commercial industrial district and uh, hopefully the board had a chance to look over the Horsley Witten comments uh, for review. This application is a complete application. Entertain a motion to accept the application. Motion made by Mr. Berry, second by Mr. Rhodes, discussion. All those in favor raise your right hand. Opposed? This time I'd like to invite Doobie Kia to make that presentation. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Oh, I might have hit it with this thing. Sorry about that. Um, Doug Remore from Jewel Construction. They're the GC on the project. And I also have Henry Hess from Sebago Technics, the uh, landscape architect. You guys have seen this a um, couple times now. I can do the whole plan set and go through it if you want, if you need to see it again. If not, we can just leave it there and we can come back to it if, if necessary. So what we're looking for tonight, uh, we already got the application accepted. We're looking for action on the waivers. And if you guys are in a good mood, we can go for approval uh, with conditions, of course. Um, we did get the uh, staff memo. There are a few things in there that uh, we'd like to discuss with the board and also the third party review, uh, most of which appeared to be fluff and none of the comments in there were unsurmountable or, or would affect the design at all. Um, so I don't think that uh, anything there is a showstopper. Um, uh, one is an issue with deliveries. Uh, Doobie does not control deliveries, unfortunately. Uh, so a restriction on the plan, we can put that note on the plan, but odds are there may be, in certain circumstances, a delivery that may come after hours. So I don't know how the board feels about that and putting a note on that. We don't want them to be not in compliance, but they stress the fact that it, it's not them driving the trucks, essentially, so they cannot control it. Um, another issue was the uh, dumpster enclosure. Uh, from a maintenance standpoint, they prefer what's on the plan now, which is chain link with the vinyl slats um, versus a vinyl fence enclosure. Uh, the reason for that is long-term maintenance. They feel that's going to stand up a lot better than the vinyl once you hit the vinyl with the plow or a car, it's toast, essentially. Um, chain link will last a lot longer. Um, this is also what was done at Tractor Supply, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so there is precedent for it. Um, that's it in a nutshell. Um, if you guys want, we can go through the waivers one by one. We've discussed them twice already, so I don't know if we really need to rehash everything. Uh, it's up to the board's pleasure at this point, so I guess I'll entertain questions. 
We may have some for you. We're going to open the public hearing and then we'll have questions for you. This time I open the public hearing. Does anybody have any comments on this application? Director Mears, is there any correspondence concerning this application? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and obtain questions from the board. Mr. Richardson. Sure. Um, with regard to the um, possible after hours delivery and that kind of thing, um, what usually takes place at that time? I mean, what, one of the things I'm concerned about is the sound level for your neighbors yes. and that kind of thing. You, and you read the requirements for that. that yeah. Is it 55 or 65 decimals? For after it's, hours. it's yeah. not dumpster emptying, so you're not going to have that loud clash, crash of a dumpster when they put it back on the ground. It's just uh, back with back door of a truck opening up, maybe a lift gate, yeah. and then a guy rolling a dolly of stuff into the building itself. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty low intensity in terms of noise. All the loading also occurs on the side of the building, not the back. So it's not towards the residential use. And there's also that fence that we're proposing, which is eight feet high, as well as the buffer plantings. Yeah, I, I, I personally don't have any problem with the uh, dumpster enclosure. Um, I think, I mean, having worked in the solid waste industry for a number of years, basically my career, I think the, I think the um, final ones, especially in the winter time, can be subject to cracking and just falling apart, and that's not a good thing. Where, so, at any rate, um, my my biggest concern is I don't think I've ever seen an application with 18 requested waivers. They make sense for what you're doing, but I just really have an issue with the number. That's it, it would have been less had the DOT project not, not come into play. That, that has really changed a lot of what, what can be done on this site. It pushed everything back and pushed us into extra waiver land, so to speak. So unfortunately, yes, that, that is a, a situation that we cannot control. Um, I honestly would rather have a waiver-free plan completely, but not every plan can fit that criteria. And as I said, I'd love to have fewer than what we have. Um, but it's just not doable in this circumstance. Mr. Horton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess slightly disappointed that to hear that a lot of the comments from the third party, Horsley Witten, uh, were fluff. I didn't, I didn't see them as such. Uh, just to kind of comment on a few, uh, Horsley Witten recommends that the applicant and the planning board consider potential options for reducing the proposed impervious site cover, um, given the size of the uh, development and the constraints of the property uh, there were some concerns there i think uh building rate up building the retention pond right up within one foot of the boundary adjacent to the uh mobile home park has its concerns as well um it sounds like there was some complications with the modeling proposed yeah no, um, nothing insurmountable on the modeling at that all. so i think uh there's a lot of um findings by Horsley Witten in the report uh, to speak to another there were some kind of some conflicts conflicts between what the average high water table was Horsley Witten retained their own um, their own um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for they retained a uh, additional consultant and did their own study drilled wells to monitor and found that really the groundwater was far lower that what? is our consultant. Truslow, Truslow Inc. is our geo hydrogeologist who did the wells. Okay. And Horsley Witten concurred with their findings. Okay, and, and found that the average was 16 feet below surface? Yes, right? okay. yes, exactly. Which would allow for additional subsurface um, it, 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 right? it would. It, it basically uh, verified the fact that our infiltration approach that we have in the plans now is valid, given okay. that the water table is not within four feet of the bottom of the practice. Another recommendation they make is at least at minimum adding roof runoff, which is considered clean, to a portion of this subsurface infiltration system. Unfortunately, so, given that this has to go to alteration of terrain, roof runoff is not considered clean, and it must be treated. Okay. So it has to go through either a bioretention cell or some sort of underground sand filter in this case. So personally, I guess as, as the case is with SRTC, I would prefer and recommend that we that the applicant provide written response to each of these 
and I would kind of like to see um, and be able to kind of read through what each of those recommendations and responses are. I think that's what I got for now. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Mr. Rhodes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would echo a lot of uh, Mr. Horton's comments around the, the Horsley Witten item, um, items raised. I wouldn't characterize very many of these as fluff. Um, they also highlight, I think, and I would ask Mr. Berry to correct me if I'm off here, uh, the heavy reliance on the bioretention pond, the sole bioretention pond for water runoff treatment and the fact that your landscape plan largely fights against the maintenance of that site um, with plantings directly in that bioretention uh, basin. Um, I don't know if that's a simple oversight. Uh, I know that there was significant time pressure on the revision of the landscaping plan, so I suspect that's the case. Um, however, if you're going to put all your eggs in one basket, you should be able to maintain that basket. And it doesn't seem that, according to Horsley Ritten, who I tend to believe you're capable of doing that well with the design as it stands. Um, I am also a little disappointed to see a significant cutback by nearly half of the plantings that are being placed here, uh, going from 20 to 12 trees on the site, um, and the replacement of a native species with a non-native. Uh, for those. Um, so you've gone from a landscape plan that I thought was extremely good for a side of your nature to one that I have significant qualms with, um, particularly where it fights a utility purpose on the site. Um, I'd like to see a response to Horsley Witten's comments as well here. Um, I do recognize that the amount of waivers that you're looking for are due in a lot of cases to circumstances beyond your control. Um, the DOT plan puts you under a lot of pressure there, so I'm not concerned about the count I am concerned with how they're addressed. Thank you. Mr. Barry. All right, I, I want to echo uh, everyone else that's spoken so far. Uh, Horsey William did a very nice job on their review. Um, you know, I only have really one thing to note here. Um, they did speak to, um, uh, to the pond, right? So they talk about how the, the slope is two to one. Um, I could tell you in my time as a civil engineer, once I started getting below two and a half to one, I was reinforcing those, those walls. Yeah, the, the plans do show Russian control blanket, and they have. Okay, so it is there. Yeah, I, I didn't they, see they it. missed it. Okay, cool. Um, you know, I also have mixed blessings. I, I hear what, what Mr. Rhodes is saying about the, uh, you know, it's a, it's a planted pawn, right? So you're putting, you're putting species in there. Um, where, where exactly is your four bay? Is there a four bay in here, and where where is it? There's no four bay. Pre-treatment is by pretex units, mm -hmm. and also the tree wells in the parking lot. Okay. So it's uh, also uh, deep sump catch basins. There are two of those on the site as well. Okay. All right. That's fine too. Um, maybe another option, and this is I'm looking more in your direction, guys. Um, you know, so I know you had comments about the amount of impervious area, right? Um, would you be open to maybe using pervious uh, pervious uh, surface from a cost perspective I know it's no. more, I know it's more it's, costly it's definitely more cost I'd have to discuss that with the applicant it's sure. something we, we did not um, evaluate solely for that purpose. yeah I get it I know you you put down a lot of pervious space that's not yep. there I know from a from an engineering perspective obviously that's a lot of, yes. of water to have to treat um, I have seen that in other sites uh, for example I think I've saw it at the the Lowe's in Greenland half of their parking lots that are not high volume they use the pervious and they, they have that on the outer parking lot but the issue I, with that is they have to use more salt so in the water testing data from that site, you can see the chloride numbers through the roof. Mm. So this is in an aquifer zone. I'd rather not introduce that if I don't have to. Okay, once again, back and forth. But it's it's an option, at least to let you guys know it's out there. Um, beyond that, I, I still really like the site. I like what you guys are doing. It's certainly an improvement to what's already there. Um, I want to see this project move, but uh, much to the, uh, the other board members' uh, statements, I, I would like to see individual items addressed as well. Um, I think it's worth it to at least give it a second glance. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Would you like me to have the landscape architect come up and address uh, Mr. Rhodes' concerns? Yes, go ahead. Okay. They're echoing Horsley Witten. So actually, appreciate yes. That. Go for it. No, that's all right. Unless the board would like to see it, I think it'll be okay. <clears throat> Good evening, members of the board. My name is Henry Hess. I'm a landscape architect with Sebago Technics. Um, 
I certainly hear the concerns uh, when it comes to native species, and I believe native species are important for what we're doing uh, when it comes to the landscape and preserving the natural environment. Um, certainly is a, a limited selection of those native species as well on that list, and the importance and selection there uh, was given a lot of critical thought. And I, I do hear your concerns with not using a, partic a particular native species. Um, and I would, I would say that a lot of the landscape on this plan is either native or endemic to New England. So either planted commercially and understood to live well and do well and not actually be invasive or actually be native. Um, and I would also like to bring up uh, just the a concept and idea around parking islands with engineered soils in them uh, surrounded by impervious area. That, that is not a native condition. Um, and it's important to look at species here where we're looking at something that's endemic, is known to survive a little bit more of a heat island effect, um, and is, is a very hardy tree when it comes to some of these parking lot islands. Um, and if I'm speaking to any of the, the particular trees there, I'm, I'm speaking to the Zelkova, and I don't know if that was the, the concern uh, by the board members. Um, but that's, that's the one that I know kind of jumps out at the site uh, for me. And when we looked at that selection, the, the thought being around selecting a plant that we know can survive in a more, I'm going to call it an urban environment while surrounded by, pa by pavement um, in really drought tolerant soils that are designed to actually drain water and filter uh, contaminants out of them. Um, so in that, in that regard, that was kind of why we, we moved away from a, a, a specific native species that was on the list, is looking for something that'll have a higher chance of survival on there than, uh, than particularly something that might have a deeper tap root, like a Nyssa, or something that needs wider root spread to really grow and, and, and fill out the area there. And I'm a huge proponent for habitat for birds, native species, fauna. Um, but a living tree that's going to be hardier and do well is going to provide better habitat than a specific native that may not do well. Um, and that is just the, uh, just the concept and idea of why we selected that tree. Um, for the trees in the infiltration basin, I, I do hear a little bit of that concern as well. I think we're always looking at infiltration basins and making sure we're not kind of affecting the greater volumes and uh, inundating these, uh, inundating the trees with more water than is necessary. Um, we do have some steep slopes as were brought up uh, around the infiltration basins and survivability of plants on two to one slopes is limited. They get a little bit more exposed to the cold elements due to lack of insulating soils. Um, and in coordination with, uh, with Eric and the engineering team, understanding that that infiltration basin is designed to wick water through and infiltrate very quickly. There won't be water there for more than periods of 10 to 15 hours. I mean, I, I don't have the report in Fort in front of me but uh, a very limited amount of time of inundation. Uh, with a deep water table there, th we, we anticipate some good drainage through there as well. So uh, we're really looking for this plan to create a lot of screening through there uh, and hopefully have a, a wealth of, of growing, uh, a wealth of healthy growing plants in the, in the landscape in the, in the parking lot there. It is a challenging site, uh, but if, if the board has any other specific comments, I'd be happy to address them and, or answer any questions that you might have. Any questions from the board? All right, we'll turn to regional impact and detain a motion for regional impact. Mr. Richardson. Yes, I'll make a motion that it does not have any regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Richardson, Second. seconded by Mr. Barry. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll get into waiver request. Waiver number one is for vehicle circulation and parking non-residential developments. Does anybody have a motion? They want to allow 69 parking spaces where 111 spaces are required. Mr. Horton. I guess just uh, a point of discussion. Um, I don't know that I'd be comfortable really voting on any waivers going forward for me personally as one board member because given the severity or some of the comments Horsley Witten provided, I think changes could be warranted for some of them. I guess that's kind of where I'm sitting right now. So I'm not in favor of voting for any waivers at this time. 
Okay, you have a motion to continue then? I'll make a motion to continue until date certain next month. Do I oh, come That would be June 19th. June 19th. Oh, June 25th, sorry. June 25th. <laughs> I... Motion made by Mr. Horton to continue until next month. Discussion, hang on. Um, Second well, by Mr. For discussion. Richardson. So discussion. Is there anything specific in the Horsley Witten report that you would like addressed, or do you want them to answer everything? Because we could go through the list. If, they, if it's a, a short number of items you want to address, I, I'd be willing to hear them out. I'd like each comment addressed, but what really stands out is Horsley Witten's recommendation that the applicant and the planning board consider potential options for reducing the proposed impervious site cover, which may also include reducing the size of the parking area. Hmm. For the discussion? Mr. Richardson. I think, I mean, I was, I was saving my particular comments for each one of the waivers as they come up, but I think that, you know, that, that's pretty inclusive here as far as moving this one forward, uh, getting the answers that uh, Mr. Horton is talking about and others here. Um, We've always had re written responses on those uh, of those recommendations, and not seeing them is I don't want to get into that habit. And I think we really do need to see the written comments. They're on the record then, as opposed to just speaking here about them. Any further comment from the board? Seeing none. All those, uh, Mr. Haberman. Yeah, I just want to agree with uh, both parties that uh, written response is definitely the, what I would prefer to see as well. Any further discussion? All those in favor of continuing until next month, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Thank you very much, guys. Application will be continued to June. Our next item under new business, item A, Roman Catholic Bishop of Manchester is seeking site plan approval to convert a single family building into a church religious facilities use on a property located at 10 Dolson Street in the residential duplex R2 district, assesses map 24, lot five, site number 15, 2024. Director Mears, do you have anything to add? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is proposing to redevelop an existing single-family structure to utilize the property for church-related activities, including a church office, administrative, and meeting space. Improvements include constructing a 2,530-square-foot addition to the existing building and upgrading the utilities and drainage infrastructure. Uh, Steve Height actually provided Dana Crosley, planning technician, uh, an update. The applicant originally submitted a voluntary merger. They are seeking to withdraw the merger request and will be submitting a lot line uh, adjustment plan. The lot line adjustment plan will modify the northwest boundary between the subject lot and map 24, lot 6. The applicant will need to submit uh, easements with this plan, this lot line revision for access and parking between the two lots. The applicant is requesting that the board review the site development and include the lot line adjustment requirement as a condition of approval, and it will come back next month for the lot line revision for June 25th. Uh, the property is located in a residential dupli duplex district, uh, and the proposed addition at this time is within the rear setback applicant is proposing to complete a lot line adjustment so that will address that issue so is it will it not need zoning relief is the application ready for acceptance yes it is the site plan is entertain a motion to accept the application 
Motion made by Mr. Berry, seconded by Mr. Vincent. Any discussion? Mr. Horton. Again, uh, I'm just uh, wondering if we, if the application is really complete, if uh, the lot line adjustment is not shown on the plan, and we can make an educated um, review of the plans. So, and I guess that's my thought here is if it's going to alter our conversation or stuff like that. So, if director, you can provide any comments on that if more if it's more administrative or would alter the plans it's more administrative because it's just moving the lot line uh, so and it would be a condition of the site plan request that they have to come back for the lot line revision can I just Thank add you. to that if I could FX Bruton Bruton and Barry be here for the applicant um, I, I understand your comment mr. Horton and what we want is actually a condition that is premised upon the plan that you actually do have in front of you. So we would have to come back and get approval for that plan that you actually do have. So we wanted to address that for that concern that you have. Any further questions from the board? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? This time I'd like to invite Mr. Bruton to make his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is FX Bruton. I'm with Bruton and Barraby. I'm here representing the applicant tonight. With me is Mike Meenery. Uh, Mike is with Civil Works, and uh, he will be going through the plans uh, briefly. Also with us is Father uh, Andrew Nelson, who's the captain of the ship, and um, Dan Bison is a project architect. This is a uh, project that actually um, is fairly small in nature. It's basically the addition of onto a, a, a building. The addition is 2,530 feet. It normally wouldn't be here, uh, but we actually have to ask for a few waivers. Those waivers are somewhat, what I would say, de minimis, uh, but uh, they're also based upon existing conditions and what we're doing in terms of the size of the project. So I think you'll hopefully find that they're reasonable. They're very straightforward, and I'll let uh, Mike talk about those. Um, as was mentioned by Ms. Mears, uh, we, uh, originally thought that we would merge this parcel with the existing uh, church um, and because there's a uh, setback issue we're going to basically do the lot line adjustment and keep it as two lots with that in mind i will be drafting for that lot line adjustment when we come back a uh, cross uh, easement access uh, document which will be very uh, straightforward and obviously for that purpose and it really isn't for the church because uh, you may or may not know you can't it, you don't usually give yourself an easement um, and there's the same owner here um, but the staff had a, a concern rightfully so with respect to what happens if that little lot is sold so um, that makes sense and so that's how we'll characterize that easement language for that purpose um, really we're here tonight uh, because <coughs> Uh, the church has been looking to do this expansion for a while and we'd like to get uh, a building permit and we think with this conditional approval we can do that we actually have uh, uh, contractors lined up and you may or may not know that's quite a task these days um, so again we're looking for that um, possibility of, of moving forward and again it was important for us even though we didn't have it as part of the application to get that lot line adjustment plan in front of you so you can see it's basically just moving a line uh, further into the existing large parcel um, so uh, one other thing that came up is that um, on a butter who was kind enough to actually contribute to the project already mr. Joe LeBrun, LeBrun will come up and talk to you about the original site uh, subdivision plan that happened a long, a long time ago um, and I just wanted to show that to you and I'm sure he'll come up and do the same but on the second page and on the plans that we've always submitted we show a cul-de-sac area in uh, uh, Dolson Street right here um, and his concerns are not fluff but um, basically uh, he uh, and I would agree this wasn't really built out as a cul-de-sac at the time, but you'll notice that our parcel stops here where there's a straight line, so it's not really touching and concerning the cul-de-sac issue. 
So the only reason I brought that up is because I think there's an issue that he had in terms of notifying the city in essence. Um, and that's an issue between that we believe the city and whoever else wants to see that happen. It's not an interest of the church and I don't think it really affects our operation at all. Um, so I'm sure he'll come up and express that and I, we welcome that input. But again, it, it doesn't um, affect this project per se and it's a good time for him to come up and express his concerns to the city. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to Mike and um, he can talk you through the waivers. Thank you. Hello, uh, this is Michael Mannery with Civil Works New England. Um, so as Mr. Uh, Bruton mentioned, we'll be asking for five waivers tonight uh, for landscaping on site. So briefly to explain that, um, the landscaping on site, we're gonna do our best to retain all that aesthetic landscaping. Um, the next waiver is a traffic analysis, uh, waiving that. Um, briefly, that the increase in trips per day is negligible from going from this house to this size office. It's quite small. Um, as well, uh, the frequency that it's being used. Uh, the next waiver uh, is for granite curbs. Uh, so on site throughout the rest of the church parking lot and their walkways is all asphalt berm curbs. So that's what we're gonna be proposing in that small uh, curbing section. Uh, we're also gonna be waiving a third party review. Um, Again, this is a, a, a single family house being converted into a smaller office space. Um, we're proposing a fire retention pond that treats all proposed impervious surfaces, uh, collects it, puts it through that pond, uh, third party review. Would base off of that, I imagine. Uh, and then the last uh, waiver is for underground utilities. Uh, so I believe that's mostly for the electric. So that proposed utility pole and overhead uh, electric going to the site was designed by Eversource and that's Eversource's request. Um, so we'll be waiving that. So that's briefly going over the five waivers. Um, There's any other question or comment? Okay. We may have some for you after the public hearing. Yeah. Steve Height with Civil Works. Just to expound on what uh, Mike was just talking about, just so you guys see if the site plan. <clears throat> the berming that we're talking about is the uh, curbing that go along the existing edge of pavement that's out here right now. And all we're doing is directing the uh, stormwater where we need to go, where it's actually going today. So instead of putting granite curbing in for a couple of feet, we're just, we just we just want to maintain the asphalt that's out there. Some of the comments we had from staff from TRG as well as um, with this facility, we do have handicapped access in the front here. So we're, we're proposing to basically stripe two of the parking spaces in the existing parking lot for handicapped parking in the front here. Uh, which, which when we were initially, well, it's kind of the conversation that was about a lot line adjustment or, a, or a, a merger plan was we had talked about it and we just, we just thought a merger plan would make the most sense until we started looking at uh, setbacks and then lot line adjustment has to come into play. It doesn't change the, the configuration of anything we're talking about here or any of the design aspect. It really just get, grants us the, uh, the, the rear setback. That's really it. Um, and as Mike had mentioned, uh, Eversource has already been out here and they, they have no desire to trench through Dolson Street to get a utility out here. So they've already come out here and stacked a pole and they're gonna put a pole here. We will go underground from the pole to the building. It's just getting that service out to here now. There is a service there now, but they have to upgrade that. And so that's their, that's their presentation. So they don't want to run that and tie it into the house as you normally would just because of the size of that. Um, 
And as Mike had mentioned, the detention basin that we're talking about over here, it takes all of the runoff from the, uh, the proposed building as well as the, the rear of this site over here. Uh, Mike actually went out and had done the stormwater. Um, it, it's, you guys have great sand in different areas of uh, Summersworth, so we take advantage of that. And in here, um, it really is, is it's, it's a perfect situation for what we want to do, and that's just treatment. Um, so in regards to the site itself, as you can see, it's, it's a fully designed site with the existing building tying into here. And Father can talk to you exactly how they propose to use it. I think it's going to be your facility that you're going to be uh, occupying. And uh, we're going to utilize the same facilities that, that are there now. So garbage will be in the same, the dumpsters that are on site. So we're not going to have that. Um, th there, is, there is limited access through here. So he's going to maintain exactly what he has already arranged with the fire department. So that's going to be exactly the same. Um, and, and other than that, it's really, uh, it should be as, it's as simple as we're trying to explain it. So, uh, but if you have quite, the, the, the waivers are just to get us to the point where what you're looking at now. The third party review, although we do understand third party review is really re very important. Um, it, in this case, it, it's, it's this. I mean, we're, we're talking about putting some water into the ground here and that's really what you see is really what we got. So we had talked to staff about that as well as at TRG and they're, they're I wouldn't say recommendation, but they, they had accepted the fact that it made sense to ask for that waiver because it's not to prolong this and to send it out a little further. Um, and that's really about it. I mean, just to be able to provide the, the, the parish uh, another facility that they can come to and, and have uh, um, uses with, and then just trying to hit the other amenities associated with it. So that's, that's the basis of the waivers and what we, uh, what we proposed. Thank you. With that, I'll open the public hearing. Anybody care to comment on this application? Mr. LeBrun. If you come up to the po if you come up to the podium, state your name and address, please. Uh, Gene LeBrun, 82 West High Street, and I'm the biggest abutter on this property. And uh, I haven't even seen any of these plans. I did see a small very small, but uh, I was wondering, I didn't realize that they were gonna be making the, uh, along the church uh, parking lot, which seems to be, the, so most of the people that are gonna go there are gonna be coming through the church parking lot itself. But Dolson, the, the house doesn't have one inch on Dolson Street, so I don't know how it got a number 10, because it doesn't have one inch on Dolson Street. And the people on Dolson Street have to be also considered be, with the increase of, uh, of cars because of the closing of Holy Trinity. It would be reasonable to that cul-de-sac to put in, and I have the original plan here to be put in. Now you're talking about telephone poles, which I'm part of. I've never been, that's never been brought to my attention. My barn gets its electricity from that. So what's gonna be changing, I don't know. As far as the water situation, I don't know where this pond is going to be. But the house that's there now was built on a pond. I have the map of 1971 that shows that that pond was filled in to build this house. So I wanna know exactly what the pond is gonna be. I'm all for this project. I already gave a donation for it, so it's not like I'm against it. But there's a lot of things that are in the air. And a lot of things that didn't happen back in 71, like the cul-de-sac should have been completed when uh, uh, El, Shid, El Cid Leclerc, Norm Leclerc's father, owned the property, that the last two houses actually on Dolson Street set back for this cul-de-sac. And I think that, you know, the fire department, if they got a call saying it's on church, uh, for the church, if there was a fire, they'll be coming to the church. But the last two houses on the end, or any house on there, they're gonna be coming on Dolson Street. And to turn a fire truck on that tr street is almost impossible. And the same thing with the rubbish. Try to get a big truck turned in that, because the church is, is the, uh, has the right of way 
to Dolson Street. The house was built on a right of way. So there's a lot of things that are in the air. They were left that way in 71 and has been wrong since. But I'm all for the fa I'm all in favor. I just think that we're uh, closing our eyes to the amount of traffic that's going to be coming through this area. Because once Holy Trinity closes, I saw how, how many cars were there at, uh, at Easter. The place was mobbed. So you add on to that, it's going to be that much more influx back and forth. And Dolson Street seems to be quite popular for leaving. And it's not that wide. On that section, uh, where the church, on the, the church uh, uh, easement, Dolson Street widens up. But I still say, if they're going to keep the, uh, the uh, fence closed, which I'm totally in favor, they should be a cul-de-sac. And uh, I'd like to know a little bit more about these plans. I haven't even seen them. Hey. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Anybody else care to uh, comment? Is there any correspondence concerning this application, Director Mayors? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close public hearing. Mr. Bruton, could you address some of the concerns? Well, like the best part was it didn't seem like there was any opposition, which is great. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, but there are concerns, and again, we're, I'm happy to address them. Um, the uh, pond, or what we think of as the infiltration for the uh, drainage, is, is shown, obviously, on the plans. And um, one thing I didn't mention, but that Steve mentioned, was we went through the SRTC process and there was a, a lot of questions and a lot of analysis and in our packet to you we show you all of our responses which addressed all of those concerns and I think uh, uh, Ms. Mears would agree that we addressed all the concerns and that's why we actually got here so we went through that process um, so I think the uh, there's sound engineering behind the, the drainage uh, presentation and it's clearly marked on the plan and uh, we're happy to meet with Mr. LeBron and show him the rest of the plans, although they've obviously all been um, at the City Hall uh, as well. Um, again, the, the cul-de-sac issue, I mean, this is uh, an addition to a small building, and it's a, uh, only to uh, provide for basically limited activities. There might be a meeting or um, a few staff workers working there. They're going to access this by uh, again parking on this massive parking lot that we have uh, the traffic associated with our request tonight um, is it is not what <laughs> mr lebron is discussing in terms of easter services and we're always willing and i think he knows that and i think our butters know that we're always willing to um, listen to concerns and then make provisions as we operate our church in a respectful way to a butters but I'm, i don't think that really has anything to do with this request but we're always happy to have that um, engagement and we'll continue our discussions to make sure that if there's a parking concern related to one time a year or two or three when you know christmas or whatever uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll definitely address that we're not deaf to that and um so I, I think if there was a cul-de-sac that was supposed to be there in 1971, I don't think that really relates to why we're here tonight. But if the city wants to entertain doing that because the city services that have nothing to do with the site actually um, warrant it, then that's a good discussion that the city can have with Mr. LeBron and or um, the other abutters that are directly affected by that cul-de-sac. But it doesn't touch and concern us. And the last thing I would say is this, um, Mr. LeBron mentioned that we're not technical on Dolson Street, but we have um, frontage, which under the state statute allows frontage to be considered a right away that's on a uh, plan approved by the planning board, which is what we have. And that's what any private road is in Summersworth, and you've seen that many times. So this is very typical, normal stuff. Um, but again, um, we wouldn't, uh, and we're happy to be here, but we wouldn't be here. And I'm saying that only in context. It's a very small project, uh, but we just needed waivers. For instance, the light pole, uh, no change to Mr. LeBron obviously would occur. Um, it's simply not putting that pole underground, but as Mr. Height mentioned, we'll uh, be putting um, 
of utilities on our site underground. So all of the uh, concerns that you would have with respect to the waivers, I think we've addressed either here tonight uh, or with staff or with the SRTC uh, in a very favorable way. So um, I think I've addressed everything that Mr. LeBrun raised and happy to address any other concerns that, that you I might have. Turn to questions from the board. Uh, one item uh, about Dolson Street, how are you going to keep people from coming in on the Dolson Street side? Because uh, you have signs there during the midweek that uh, they don't want any school people parking. Yeah, we have a gate system set up so that that is only open for access, which is obviously appropriate. It's our um, right away and access. Uh, but only during the church services is is when the gate. No, I, I'm talking about people visiting the office during right. the week. So what I'm suggesting is that yeah. gate will still remain closed, and they will access that through. Um... Go ahead, <laughs> uh, Father Andrew. The, the we're only using the entrances from the parking lot. We're retaining the the entrance that's on the Dolson Street side of it, or the uh, that's only because it'll be very practical. We would have got rid of it, except for the fact that sometimes as a priest, you get called to emergency call and you have a waiting room full of people. And so we're not receiving any public through that that other exit, that other, I think, the door you're talking about. Yeah, it, but, but it, the Dolson Street side door. But will they be parked? Is that driveway? Is that? No, we're not using that for, for public parking. And no public will come in from that side. They'll come sure from the, the big parking lot. Park on the, on the street at that end yeah so we're the entrance will be the main parking lot so everyone will only be able to come in that door and that garage and those doors on that side will only be for us our people for access of like our our um maintenance truck to come in or my like batman escape route um in the in the actual driveway but there'll be no there'd be no reason someone would even park on that side because they'd have to walk around the fence all the way around the building to go in the only doors that would be open yeah it would be my only concern with the uh, parking yeah. for the, res the residents on Dolson Street. yeah and what one way that we've addressed that with other project is I don't haven't discussed this but it seems logical is we put up a sign that says no church no parking for church purposes on this property so that that would be addressing anyone on Dolson Street who thought they could park there we'll just have a sign that says they can't and we, you know, obviously we we're cognizant it's a concern, so we we're going to enforce that, you know, self-enforce that as well. So that maybe that would address that. Mr. Vincent, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, FX, for taking my questions. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm in favor of uh, the project uh, wholeheartedly, and I'm actually in favor of the five waivers. Um, but I'll get to maybe explain that in a little bit here. Um, uh, so a point of clarification here for me. Uh, so you're not proposing, or are you, to have this uh, cul-de-sac put in place? No, not at all. Not no, at all. This is just, a, and thank you for that, this is just a, a diagram of what was supposed to be years ago. Is that what that is? Yeah, so when we do, and when Steve does existing conditions, we just obviously have to show you the existing conditions. <sighs> That comes from a plan from 1971, so we did not want to do it. But it, if you look closely, we did hash marks because that signifies that that's what the plan says. That's the but right that's, of way. But that's not the existing condition. That's correct. So if you look, sorry. It's a, pa it's a paper cul-de-sac. Yeah, exactly. Essentially, but, yeah. Right. So the, the, what, what you see here right now is the right of way that was from 1971. Right. The actual conditions of that are, are shown inside of that. Right. Okay, and I, I guess I have another comment. So, um, <clears throat> so as far as there was some concern about fire apparatus and things of that nature, um, being a uh, veteran of the fire department for 33 years, I know that if, uh, as an officer, a lieutenant, uh, which I held that position for several years, I know that if I if a if there's a fire somewhere and you get down the end of Dolson Street, trust me, the fire department has the way to get through the fence. They really do. And, and you know, people are concerned about that. But they have tools and equipment that can either cut a lock or some chains, put that back. Um, and if you had a real major concern uh, with that, um, 
you could you also have a device that's installed that brings the fence back by itself automatically that the, there's a code uh, so there's ways around that um, um, and that's my comments thank you thank you mr vincent mr barry uh, actually i was thinking the same thing as uh, councillor vincent um it's my concern would be if you're going to keep that gate closed on dolson street you'd have to open up the other gate on the other end at the uh, northwest corner of so the parking it, lot. So there is no gate. It's it has been removed? the only gate. Oh, okay, because I remember they put it up for good reason. Oh, there, excuse me, there is a gate. <laughs> Next to the church. I go there every week, and I completely forgot. I remember. <laughs> if you want if you want to speak into the mic, Father. <laughs> we put the gate up to be good neighbors because we were getting people, what was happening is kids were doing donuts in the parking lot because it's a great place to do donuts. Uh, don't listen to that if you're at home. But <laughs> uh, And so we put the gates up because Dolson's, I be, like the church popularity has gone up 90% in Dolson Street since we put those that gate in. So we, and we put it because essentially <laughs> what's happened is half of Summersworth has used the parking lot as a road or as the cul-de-sac. That's the paper cul-de-sac. And so we put that to try to um, help, and, and as Joe and others on the street can say, that's been a huge difference. Um, we work with the city, so if we know it's going to be snowing, uh, and our, when our guys, we open the gate to, so it makes it easier, even though they're coming across all the way across on, our, on the right of way, down into the parking lot, we open it because we don't want the plow drivers to, who are exhausted and trying to keep everything going. So we try to play good neighbor in that. And we, I think we found a, a good balance with that. But we did, we do put them, um, we did put the three gates in. And when we generally, when we don't have services, we have it down to one, to one open. Again, not because the city's ever told us, but because we've tried to be good to to Joe and to the people on Dolson Street to say, how can we make this so that, and, and knowing the high schools down the road and, and all the rest. Um, I mean, in truth, I don't think there's many high schools watching. The gate's not even locked. It's made to look to lock, and most of the high school kids don't go too close to, to open it. So, uh, I mean, that, that's been our kind of good neighbor approach to trying to help Dolson Street and, 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 and Gene right next door and, and all the rest. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, and that makes sense. I mean, uh, I get why you do it. I mean, we were all kids once. We all had cars, and we were 16, right? Um, you know, but it's going to be a business. You know, it's, you're going to have to run it like a business. If you're going to be open, you're going to have to open the gate every day. So as long as you understand yeah, that's going to be Yeah, so the best thing. thing about this parish is it's alive, like, 24-7. You know, it, it's it. It very active. Uh, it's not just once a week. We don't disappear for six days out of the week. Mm -hmm. It's um, something that... We, I agree with you that those gates would have to be open for people who are coming now to the office. Um, they used to come to the rectory, which long ago was the office, um, and uh, we expect very minimal traffic, but there would be people coming and we'd be inviting them there, but they would, they, uh, the staff there would be engaged in opening that on a daily basis so someone could come. It would probably, I'm just guessing, like one gate closer to the rectory side so that there isn't this straight shot um, that comes right out of Dolson because that's where the other gate is. You can see it. If you can see it, you use it. And that would, if that's gated or pretended to be gated, then at least it, it helps the other issue we have. But the other one closer to the rectory could be open for, you know, people have to get in, obviously. Right. And I guess from, from my perspective, it's about um, having an understanding of where's the fire apparatus coming in, where's the where's the emergency service? Is it coming in Dolson or is it coming in no, the parking lot? Coming right. in the parking lot, and yeah. and um, I think what Mr. Vincent said is my experience with parking uh, with fire, hmm. and who also was at the meeting, the SRTC meeting, by the way. So we should sure. address this with them, but but nonetheless, uh, they they have a, a couple of different ways to get through something in that didn't seem to be a concern of theirs. Good. As long as it's been reviewed and discussed, I have no yep. issues with it. Um, I guess I'm also okay with Councillor Vincent's uh, statement. I'm okay with all the waivers. I mean, even looking at the uh, at the pond, and uh, feel free, uh, if, if you need to see a picture of the drawing, please feel free and, and take a look. It's, it's up there for your use. Um, I mean, concerning what's there, everything is draining off already naturally. You're keeping to, you know, pretty much to the existing grade for the most part. Um, 
I mean, a foot deep, you're, you're not going to overflow that, those, those banks. There's no way. Um, and I'm okay that you're 0.1 CFS over. To me, I, I would also consider that to be negligible as well. So um, I have no problem with any of those waivers. Thank you. Questions from the board? Uh, clarification from uh, Director Mears. Uh, we'll be voting on everything tonight, including the site plan. Yes, but it would be updated plan revisions to include uh, a lot line revision. Revision is required to be approved by the planning board and submitted with final plans. And rather than the voluntary lot merger. Yes, and withdrawing the voluntary lot merger. Yeah. Uh, and and we're saying just to make everyone comfortable as presented tonight on the on the draft plan, I'll call it. It's more that we just didn't have notice, okay. but that we're not coming back with a different lot line. Okay, this time entertain a motion for uh, regional impact. Mr. Horton. I make a motion that the site plan uh, provided does not have regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Horton, second by Mr. Richardson. Discussion? All those in favor raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll dive into waiver request. Item one, waiver request. Does anybody have a motion? Motion. Mr. Horton. I move that the request of the Roman Catholic Bishop of Manchester for a waiver from section 10.2 of the site plan review regulation requirement to provide a traffic study be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Berry. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Waiver number two, is there a motion? Motion. Mr. Horton. I move that the request of the Roman Catholic Bishop of Manchester for a waiver from Section 123B of Site Plan Review Regulation requiring requirement that all proposed utilities shall be placed underground be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Richardson. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Obtain a motion for waiver number three. Keep Mr. Horton. We'll keep it going. Uh, I move that the request of the Roman Catholic Bishop of Manchester for a waiver from Section 124B4 of the site plan regulation requiring that granite curbing uh, be installed uh, be approved. Let me correct my let me correct my motion because I didn't catch it at all. I'm going to re restate it. Please. Uh, I move that the request of the Roman Catholic Bishop of Manchester for a waiver from Section 124B4 of Site Plan Regulation requirement that granite curbing shall be provided wherever curbing is proposed and permit bituminous curb be approved. Motion by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Berry. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Contain a motion for waiver number four. Keep it going. Uh, requirement to install. Let me back up. Wow, we're getting carried away. I move that the request of the Roman Catholic Bishop of Manchester for a waiver from Section 12.6 of the Site Plan Review Regulation requirement to provide new landscaping be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton, second by Mr. Richardson. Discussion? Mr. Haveman, you all set? Yes. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Entertain a motion for waiver number five. I move that the request of the Roman Catholic Bishop of Manchester for a waiver from section 12.19 of the site plan review regulation requirement of third party review to be completed, be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton, second by Mr. Vincent. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. At uh, this time, uh, Director Mears, would you like to review conditions of approval? Yes, uh, plan revisions, revised site plan sheet five, uh, site note nine to identify the E911 committee or city engineer will assign the building address prior to the building permit. The final plan shall include a lot line adjustment modification to ensure that the proposed building addition is compliant with zoning setbacks. Please note all waivers granted on the plan. Uh, the and then 
D, lot line revision required to be approved by planning board submitted with final plans as submitted at the May 15th planning board meeting. Conditions that must be met prior to final approval. Applicant shall submit and receive approval for a lot line adjustment application and plan with all applicable easements for review and approval by the planning board. The final plan shall bear the stamp and signature of an engineer, uh, licensed land surveyor and uh, uh, scratch landscape architect. Please submit a five folded plans or uh, for final endorsement. Conditions to be completed prior to the start of site work. Construction cost estimate for this project shall be submitted to the Department of Development Services. A pre-construction meeting is required uh, prior to the start of site work. An escrow account and the amount set by the city's contract engineer and agreeable to the Department of Development Services will be established for site construction inspections prior to any site work. A performance surety in an amount agreeable to the Department of Development Services, but not less than 25% of the cost of site construction determined by the engineer's estimate of construction value will be established for on-site erosion control and site restoration prior to any site work or uh, any site work. The applicant shall apply for a new water and sewer connection permit. Uh, erosion control shall be properly installed prior to any construction. All applicants requiring a stormwater management and erosion control plan shall submit relative pollutant accounting information to the Director of Planning and Community Development as required by the Public Works Director. Relevant to pollution tracking information shall be submitted prior to holding the pre-construction meeting. Post-construction pollutant information must be entered at the time as builds are submitted. Conditions applicable during and after construction. Building plan shall bear the stamp of a certified protection engineer licensed in New Hampshire to certify compliance with all egress, emergency lighting, smoke, heat, and CO detection systems, fire alarm monitoring and reporting systems, fire suppression systems, or any other fire protection or related uh, life safety systems required by national or New Hampshire code. A copy of the completed stormwater inspection and maintenance log shall be provided to the Department of Development Services annually on or before July 1st. This requirement shall be ongoing condition of approval and noted on final plans. All landscaping shown on the plan shall be maintained. Any dead or dying vegetation shall be replaced in a timely manner as long as the site plans remain valid. All outdoor lighting, including security lighting, shall be downlit and shielded so no direct light is visible from adjacent properties and roadways and as-built uh, plans are required as part of this project. All set? Yes. Thank you, Director Mayors. Entertain a slight site plan motion. Mr. Barry. All right. I move that the request of Roman Catholic Bishop of Manchester for site plan approval to convert a single family building into a church be approved with conditions, right? Condition being that the lot line merger is approved uh, at next month's meeting. I'll second Question that. By Mr. Barry, second by Mr. Vincent. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Site plan is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is item B, the City of Somerset is seeking a lot line adjustment at Jules Bisson Park for bleachers, a fence area, and a dugout to be located on city property located at 31 River Street and 1st Street in a residential single family A, R1A, and business district assesses map 3, lot 167 and lot 171, site number 17, 2024. Director Mears. 
Yes, so the city of Summersworth was awarded a land and water conservation fund grant back in 2019 to perform renovations and new development at the existing Jules Bison Park. And it included uh, the gazebo, some changes to the playground area and the walkway. As part of this requirement of uh, the LWCF grant, a survey was completed of the property. The city contracted with TriCheck Engineering to complete the required survey of Jules Bison, Assessor's Map 3, Lot 167. Through this survey, it was identified that a portion of the ball field was located on property owned by Public Service of New Hampshire, uh, Assessor's Map 3, Lot 171. Uh, it included uh, home plate and some of the bleachers. Uh, city staff reached out to PSNH, uh, which is now Eversource, to address the encroachment issues. PSNH and Eversource agreed to a lot line adjustment uh, to give the land to the city that would transfer 0.274 acres, approximately 12,000 square feet of land from lot 171 to lot 171. 67. This will enlarge the Jules Bison Park to be 1.892 uh, acres. Uh, PSNH Eversource has agreed to this land transfer for no fee as it was determined that the land was excess land not needed. This lot line adjustment will adjust the property boundary so that the entire baseball field, including the proposed bleachers and dugout, will be located on city property. City Council at their May 6 meeting approved the resolution uh, number 5024 to authorize the city manager to acquire property adjacent to Jules Bison Park via lot line adjustment plan uh, with PSNH Eversource. Uh, zoning compliance, lot 167, Jules Bison is located in the re residential single family uh, A district, and so is the PSNH lot is in the business district. The lot will remain compliant with the dimensional and density regulations with the transfer of the land. And this will be the last item to close out the grant. So I've been working on this since I've been here. <laughs> so is the application complete? Yes. Entertain a motion. Entertain a motion to accept the application. Motion to accept it as complete. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Barry. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Application is accepted. Entertain a motion for regional impact. I'll move that there is no regional impact. Second, Motion made by Mr. Richardson, seconded by Mr. Vincent. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? <coughs> now, is there any uh, presentation to be made this evening? Uh, just move forward with the motions? No, that's it. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, point of order. Vincent. So, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about this, and I'm thinking, well, I'm a city councilor, right? Is it a conflict of interest for me to actually vote on this because it is of city interest? I know it's a kind of crazy question, but should I, you know, recluse myself from this because I'm in with the city council? I just. I follow just, up discussion to move it forward. Are we dead? Mr. Horton, just kind of to that point, I don't see a conflict with it. I think it's administrative. Um, at best, you know, so I don't see an issue with it. Appreciate that. Thank you. Then I'll stay where I'm at. <laughs> Mr. Rich, this is objective. If the council voted to move it forward, and right. this is just an extension of that. That's the way I see it. And I just want to, if I could, just comment on that. Um, uh, they, well, they moved it. They they moved it forward because that was of their best interest. But now we're voting for it, so I just didn't know if it was a a double-edged sword, so to speak. But. I'll stay, I'll stay put. Any further discussion? You've already made your motions, right? Yes. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. That on this item, direct means? Uh, regional impact. Did we do regional yeah, impact? Yeah, we did that. Okay, okay. sorry. Okay. Item C, to make recommendation to the City Council on appointment of Michael Babinski as a commissioner to the Stratford Regional Planning Commission 
with a term to expire on May 2nd, 2028. Director Mears, do you have anything to add? Just that Stratford Regional Planning Commission reached out uh, regarding uh, Director Bobinski's term expiration and uh, Director Bobinski is uh, interested in seeking a new term and it would renew to May 2nd, 2028. So would we vote to recommend it to council? Yes, and then May council motion. Will vote. Mr. Horton. Um, I'll make a motion to recommend Mr. Bobinski to the SRPC. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion? Discussion. Mr. Uh, Horton? I just want to say a couple words about Mr. Bobinski uh, also sitting on um, Stratford Regional Planning Commission and so many conversations he has, had, he has added so much depth and awareness to the conversations. His knowledge about city infrastructure, uh, discussions about city, city water, drinking water, uh, and all the services that go along with it have been really beneficial to the conversation uh, from the surrounding communities. Uh, he also sits on the MPO, which is another subset of the commission, and votes on projects as they come along on the 10-year plan. So he adds uh, a wealth of information and a wealth of knowledge to the board and he is a great asset uh, of the community so that's all I got thank you for that mr. Richardson he's also on the executive committee and uh, that's a dealing with issues of personnel and budgeting and uh, bylaws and all those kinds of things too which he's very good at so just another part of what he's been doing and contributing as he's been there so any other discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Item D, any new business that may come before the board? Director Mears. None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Item five, workshop business. Director Mears. Uh, none this evening, Mr. Chairman. Item six, communications and miscellaneous. Any comments? Mr. Richardson. I, I just have one. Um, I, I don't I don't I really want to see that Kia project go through but it really bothered me with 18 requests for waivers and I don't know whether that's the plan or whether that's what we have people requesting waivers for and maybe at some time we could you know I, I understand all the ones having to do with uh, Route 108 improvement that's coming down the road but there was just an awful lot there and that disturbs me so and a Christmas tree yeah yeah <laughs> and, and you know and I'm glad you made the comments that you did and 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 I was gonna hold my comments on each individual one but um, <clears throat> that just bothers me so I, I'll leave it at that point we'll take it uh, any other communications miscellaneous entertain a motion to adjourn Hello. motion made by mr. Horton second by mr. Barry all those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Thank you very much.